Hello and welcome. I'm Craig Harrington, and today's topic is the continued decline of America's manufacturing base. According to the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics, of the 651,000 jobs lost in the United States in February of 2009, nearly 168,000 of these were in the manufacturing sector alone. This is a huge loss for the already embattled middle class here in the U.S., because it's the middle class which has suffered the most as a result of this economic decline. According to Augie Tantillo, Executive Director of the American Manufacturing Trade Action Coalition, or AMTAC, these losses are tragic and staggering, but they should be far from surprising. These losses, and the ones we can expect to see in the future, are the logical outcome of an economic policy that was doomed to fail from the start. America has used massive amounts of accumulated debt to hide the fact that our economy is not producing any valuable assets. We are facing one of the worst economic crises in our history, and we are facing it because we thought we could substitute production with debt. We thought we could substitute manufacturing with finance, and that's proven to simply not be the case. Tantillo stressed the need for the United States to boost manufacturing by producing more of the cars, trucks, computers, electronics, chemicals, furniture, and everyday household consumables here at home. By boosting domestic production, we would create a boom of jobs for the middle class, which has found itself largely without a future in the United States because they have no jobs to support them. And domestic production would help this country right its fiscal ship before it all collapses completely around us. Said Tantillo, the U.S. government will spend trillions of taxpayer dollars to bail out the very Wall Street interests responsible for driving U.S. manufacturing offshore. Meanwhile, key policymakers and opinion leaders remain oblivious to the fact that America has run a cumulative $5 trillion trade deficit in the last eight years that has destroyed millions of middle-class jobs. To reverse that trade deficit, to restore America's manufacturing base, and to preserve the standard of living in this country, Tantillo proposed some solutions. First, the U.S. must do something to combat the enormous tax disadvantages that it faces from its trading partners around the world, specifically the value-added tax, which is utilized by approximately 150 of America's international trade partners. The value-added tax results in a net $474 billion tax disadvantage for American producers. There is no way they can possibly overcome such a crippling disadvantage through efficiency alone. Next, the United States must do something to effectively tackle China's currency manipulation. The practice allows the Chinese to purposely under undervalue their products and drive up the balance of trade surplus, particularly with the United States. Their currency manipulation has made much of the world dependent on their cheap goods, resulting in a global trade imbalance which is harming the U.S. The U.S. must also enforce the laws and the rules that it has in place to halt illegal trade activities that are practiced by foreign governments. Many of America's trading partners practice subsidization, dumping, and intellectual property theft. They have signed the same accords and agreed to the same rules with the World Trade Organization that we have, yet they are continually allowed to keep up these illegal practices. If the WTO stands in our way, the U.S. must act independently to make sure everyone is playing by the same set of regulations. Finally, it is of the utmost importance that the United States reduce its dependence on foreign oil. If the U.S. were able to completely replace oil altogether, it would create a gigantic domestic electric industry, the likes of which the world has never seen. Then, instead of going abroad to buy foreign advanced technologies, the U.S. would once again lead the world in an important and profitable field. America needs a fair trade policy, which demands that all parties abide by the same standards. The current system has no such safeguards, and the American people are suffering the consequences of that. On behalf of Concerned Citizens, I'm Craig Harrington with economyandcrisis.org news. While key